Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Seward SBS7671 or maybe you say 76, 71, I don't know, really. So this unit, well they don't really call it anything else but just that. So, so from that you should probably know what this is but it's a little bit stupid it doesn't say high voltage uh, tester or isolation tester or loop tester or some other name but this thing can do a few things continuity isolation earth loop resistance so as far as i see here we do it can probably measure the isolation to ground versus this one i mean earth versus this one via your cable and it's probably doing isolation to earth from the from the two main inputs like that right or you have it all here right but in this mode i think it's only 500 volts if i look at the specification for uh, for this one it should also be able to do 1000 volts so 250 volts, 500 or 1000 is what you should be able to um, to ch set up here. So, and then there is a neat display here and a serial port where you can download uh, your data. And a neat test button. Ooh, high voltage and all that kind of warnings. They did a, quite a good job with the with the mechanic. With the mechanical solution and the design here see we got no screws or anything here so how do you get into the display part here that is something i am a little bit interested in because i want to look what is inside this thing and uh, the bottom here there is a battery compartment with, and those screws, they're just those little, see, not screws, but click, click. So you just turn this a quarter of a turn and then it releases. So that's good. And nobody forgot batteries in this one. So good job. Please take out your batteries when you are done. So that is great. Restart then, okay. So we'll do that. So so that that will be um, C cells, and we need six C cells. But I guess I can just connect a power supply to this one. But I expect this not to be isolated from mains. So that means I should be very very careful about what I'm doing, and uh, of course I'm gonna go and pick up a trash power supply because I don't want to blow up any of my expensive power supplies for this experiment. Uh -huh, about opening, see, those little rubber feet. I pulled out one of them and deep in here there is a screw. Haha, uh -huh. I love it. This is a classic place to look for screws. So I think we got a chance to go inside the main unit, but I still haven't figured out how to get into the display unit, so, yep. So I feel I am ready for the first power-up experiment. Oh, look at that. Seems to be a live, it powers up all by itself and all that is nice it's set when putting in new batteries you should push okay so we're doing that now it looks different so is it detecting this is so i think i could take okay let's zoom out a little bit more like that right it's real difficult to see. okay that is better right so my idea is what if i short circuit those two 
Ooh, it goes to zero. That is not too bad. So what if I want to test a loop resistance? Hello? Why can't I do that? Loop kilo amps, no. I don't get that. Ohms? But, but how the hell are you supposed to? Let's try and hit the test. Oh, did you see that? Test again. So it was definitely doing something, right? Maybe if I hold this down, it continues to do the test. I think it goes from voltage to current. Look at that. See? It goes to resistance and it says zero. So here's my idea. I'm going to change this into a resistor see what happens. So let's try and see how that goes. Here is one ohm resistor with quite short leads. Let me see if that is... Yeah, that's all right, isn't it? So let's try again. Zero ohms. What if it's open? Aha! So something. Okay, let's try another resistor then. So here is 80 ohms. And now it goes high. I am confused. So when is high? What am I doing wrong here? Has it something to do with it? Loop? No. I think it says here continuity. Con yeah, okay, so we are in continuity. And it's supposed to be less than 20 ohms, right? And I put 80 ohms, and that makes it fail. Okay, so we're going to go and get a 10 ohm then. I couldn't find a 10 ohm resistor in a big, powerful one, so this is 12 ohms. And then it... Maybe that is okay, right? So this is what it wanted me to... I don't understand exactly why the hell can't it just tell me what is the resistance but that is obviously not how it works so maybe that means okay I don't know O E O O O E what is that why, why couldn't they just explain that here so so I need to go and read manuals and shit oh no that is a terrible waste of time. Let's try something more fun. Here's a neon bulb. So let's go for insulation. 250. Haha! -ha! Look at that, and that is bright! Oi, 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 oi! <laughs> and it's using one amp. So that was something, huh? How cool is that? So, yes, this thing is definitely making high voltage. Man, it is totally overdriving. And it even says 61 volts. It's so the neon bulb here uh, turns on and then it clamps the voltage to 61, as you can see here, right? Hi, hi, man. How about we try do something a little bit stupid? So insulation, we set it for 250. How about we increase this and see 500? Nah. 1000. So now I want to hold this less than a millimeter away. See if we can create a spark like that. Okay, so I'm holding it very close and doing the test. Oh, damn it. That is impossible to do with one hand. So that is a good idea about this 
push this with one hand so you don't get killed. Yes, look at that. That was a spark. I don't know if I'm able to re record this. Ah, enough playing around. But this is fun. It can make high voltage and I think you could definitely um, use this for... I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I don't know. I, I don't want to say that anyway. <laughs> but you could probably think about some good things to use these for, right? Some practical experiments <laughs> with people. That could be fun. That was actually a positive surprise to see how nice and how well designed this thing is look at that two large pcbs stacked and it's full of goody goodies here wow that will be the high voltage generator i guess got a little relay i got some programmable ic's i guess or some special ic's i don't understand exactly what that is yet but Maybe I'm going to figure that out. We got some power resistors for some test currents, some field effect transistors, and a lot of transistors and optocouplers, and all that kind of stuff to do high voltage in out power loading and all that kind of goods. High voltage here and a little fuse for all that. Definitely well designed probably gonna go and have a little look in here we got more of those big ICs and we got two cables one go that way up to uh, through to the display unit and the other one is here and that's probably the RS232 port we got all those wires that goes over there and that'll be the battery power supply I think there is a diode or something in here I can feel there's a component hidden in the cable so that is a good idea they probably forgot oh reverse voltage protection oh we better add the diode in the cable because that is what people will do when they plug in batteries probably gonna put them in the wrong way so you must always have a reverse protection but there's also some diodes and stuff down here so this connector is four pins and they're only using the two to the left here. So that is how it's done. They didn't want to use the connector so they just solder it in, okay. And another fuse. I really would like to open up a little bit more and have a little better look. Ah, I also found out how to open this one because this is done, this plate here is done exactly the same way as here. And here you can see there's a thick plastic and then a thin sticky plastic here on top with all the nice text and all that kind of stuff. And this is done exactly the same way. So when I push with my finger here, I can feel a big round hole and this is where the screw is. And then I go around here and feel, ooh, one more. Yes, and here, another one. So, to be able to open this and to see what's in here, I need to cut, cut away, or peel this away, and it's going to cause all sorts of permanent damage to this beautiful unit. But there's not a lot to see here. There's just a, a little display and a display driver and a cable that goes through the hole here, and there's just a, a little PCB that holds down this connector and cables that goes around here. So... No big surprises in here. I don't expect to find any secret things, really. So I'm not going to open in here. But definitely, I want to see a little bit more of what is hidden here. It is very, very compact and two very large boards. So definitely, let's have a little deeper look. All those resistors are in parallel here. Definitely want to 
peak current load some stuff and see there's one temperature sensor for this kind of system and then here is another system using another type of temperature sensor and another power resistor so they really went a long way with the good thermal design and we don't see any big brown brown components or anything so they did it right I've been looking a little bit more on this um, design and of course all those processors the microcontrollers pick 16 C57 one time programmable and they're from 95 so that is probably the age of this unit more or less and by the way the two wires that goes out here right the red and the black one it goes here and look so that is for all the voltage measurement and then for the resistance measurement and all that kind of stuff there's actually a thin thin track going on the other side like that and that is how it's done thin thin wires and this is actually how the whole layout is done on both boards thin thin wires and so they, they kind of aimed for let's remove as much copper as possible on their layout well i kind of do it exactly the opposite way i want to remove as little copper as absolutely possible this way you make better designs but yeah pick 16 so i removed the top pcb so we can have a better look of what is going on here so this is the of course the bottom pcb and a big deal of well, this pcb is cut away for the iec and the two banana jacks there's a third one here that's for the ground loop test and of course they got sense for that one because it's measuring low resistance and again we get we see three more peak 16 processors so a total of five peak 16 c series so that means one time programmable so can you imagine doing the software design of this unit with five different pieces of software and they're communicating via optocouplers so you see here the optocouplers they go back and for what and then we've got this connector here with all sorts of digital signals and power supplies and stuff like that probably isolated via converters like this so here's a an isolation transformer used to power supply the different isolated circuits we got a lot of analog op amps and stuff like that it's actually amazing to see how much electronics there is and this is a regulated high voltage supply got all the rectifiers here and different voltage setups and all that beautiful made this power supply so that's of course the driver for the high voltage power supply yeah we got all those resistors for high voltage measurements oh. so that's probably a cheap way to get high voltage resistors but it's amazing how how much electronics there is in this unit Look at those cables they're really really thick and kind of stiff so that goes through the the joints and all that up to the screen unit 
And as you can see here, what is going to happen is it's going to press real hard. So there's, oh, let me turn on some light. So it's easy to see what's going on here. So it would have been better to use much, much thinner wire. And here's a little funny modification with this trimmer that just don't fit. What I really like is the way that they solved the problem with the wires that goes into the PCB. That go via a hole like this. So that is definitely a great, great way to do that. So when you pull and move around with this cable, you don't stress the solder joint. So that is really, really good. This is of course not so nice. And then we got some funny modifications. And here is another a little bit funny modifications. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually full of modifications here and there and stuff like that. Oh yeah, by the way, the, the Pig 16 family, they don't have a flash on board, only one time programmable. So that means, of course, we need to have an external serial EE prom for storing data and settings, calibrations and all that kind of stuff. So that is where that is done. And that will of course be the screen cables and that will be the serial communication that goes through that cable. And we got a 4 megahertz crystal for each of the CPUs or microcontrollers. For those two, they're doing more or less the same kind of stuff here. So I see a lot of, what is that, analog uh, port expansion, right? And uh, that one is driving the display and all the digital kind of stuff. So they are more or less communicating together, but probably also sharing the same crystal to save money. So that's a little bit funny. All the others are running off their own power supply. And so they get they got their own little crystal. And also if we look at the other two on the other board, see again, there's a crystal and there's also a crystal. And again, that board here, is full of optocouplers, optocouplers, all that will be optocouplers, right? Yeah, I think so. So they're running off their own power supplies and all that kind of stuff and communicating on probably their own kind of bus system and those op uh, optocouplers they go back and forward. See? This is why they're orientated that way. So yeah, it was a very, very complicated, complex design system with tons of electronics. I must say, that was a big surprise to see this kind of, in <laughs> this kind of electronics. It's just so much. So this is the end of the video. I have assembled this nice unit again. Thank you very much for watching. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye bye.